many different types of magnesium out in the marketplace today. Doesn't it make sense to make a product with all the different types in one? Wouldn't that be great? Let me talk about why that's probably not gonna be as good as you might think it is, what to actually look for in a good quality magnesium, and what type of magnesium might be right for you. If you've seen my other videos, you've probably seen me talk about the different forms. There's a lot of different forms of magnesium out in the marketplace today. For example, there's magnesium malate, there's magnesium glycinate, there's magnesium l 3 and 8 there's magnesium oxide, which I don't prefer, you probably heard that, and there's magnesium citrate, there's also magnesium aspartate, there's magnesium taurate, uh, there's magnesium hydroxide, which is oxide in um, water when they mix together. Um, what else am I missing? Magnesium glycerophosphate, there's magnesium sulfate, using IVs, and there's magnesium carbonate. Right. So how do you know which one to use? So I'm going to try to break it down for you because I get asked this question all the time is why doesn't a company just make all these different types of magnesium and put them all in one? That would be awesome, right? Well, there's something called capsule space in a product, meaning there's only so much room to put all these different forms. So if you have a product with seven different types of magnesium, in your mind, you might be thinking, yes, this is a very good product, seven different types. I'm getting maximum benefits from every single one. Well, I'm gonna tell you if you're seven or more, you're probably not getting, you're probably just getting a little bit of every single one because there's not enough capsule space. So obviously say pick one magnesium for the benefits that you want. And another thing I wanna to, to, you know, reemphasize is that magnesium is great for a lot of things on its own. So don't think that just because it has a glycine behind it that it's gonna help you with sleep. Magnesium in general is gonna help with sleep. But when you have magnesium glycine, it's gonna be an added boost for relaxation, for more um, restful, more quality sleep, deeper quality sleep. If you have magnesium malate, basically they put malic acid with magnesium together, and it's very energizing, not in a caffeine stimulant way, but it's giving you natural energy from the mitochondria. When you're producing ATP from food that you ingest, you're getting it through the Krebs cycle, through TCA. These are happening every single every day. And in your body, if you have malic acid in there, it's gonna help produce more acetyl-CoA, which produces more ATP, and that's what you want for more energy. So if you have someone who is fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue, for example, malic acid and magnesium together are a very good combination. have been studied extensively in fibromyalgia type syndromes. So let me break down one of my common favorite products. This is reactive magnesium. You've probably seen it before. And this is a blend. So this is a blend of three different types of magnesium. First is magnesium malate. Second is magnesium glycine, glycinate, and magnesium citrate. Now, on the bottle, it's gonna say 235 milligrams. That's for two capsules. But how do you know which, how much you're getting of each one? Is it broken down evenly in thirds? Typically, it's not. I talk extensively about this product for my muscle pain, my muscle tension, muscle spasms, because this product is majority of magnesium malate. For one capsule, it's 68 milligrams of magnesium malate. It's also got 22 milligrams of magnesium glycine, 29 milligrams of magnesium citrate. So for two capsules, that's gonna be 136 milligrams of magnesium malate, it's going to be 44 milligrams of magnesium glycinate, and it's gonna be 58 milligrams of magnesium citrate. With this product, you're getting maximum absorption from different pathways. You're getting um, active diffusion, you're getting passive diffusion with the mag, mag citrate. So this is a great product for different absorption path, uh, pathways in the body. But say for example, you want more magnesium glycinate. This product's not got, got very much, right? We just said 44 for two capsules. So if you needed it for more deeper sleep, you could definitely take it before sleep, but you might actually take more magnesium glycinate right before bed. I hope that makes sense because there's a lot of products out there with seven different types of combinations. And so if there's magnesium oxide, there's magnesium hydroxide, magnesium carbonate, uh, magnesium glycinate, three and eight, whatever, say you're just getting 20 milligrams of each one. And so you're really just, you know, you're getting magnesium in your body, but you're not getting maybe some of the other effects that you've heard me talk about. I hope that kind of clears up the confusion. So in my opinion, find one that works for you. For example, my personal routine is magnesium malate in the morning, either this product or straight magnesium malate in the morning, because remember, it's good for energy production. It's going to help with a more focus throughout the day. If you have more energy, you're more um, determined to do, to get your tasks done, etc. So I take magnesium malate in the morning, because also I work out, and I don't want a lot of muscle soreness, and I, don't, I have a lot of muscle pain. Magnesium malate helps me so much. But I also take magnesium glycinate before bed, and I take it in a powder, okay? About 300 milligrams of pure magnesium glycinate helps me, very, helps me with rest. One thing I wanna mention is that some products, the good products will actually list the elemental form of magnesium, 
elemental just actually means how much of the uh, periodic table magnesium is in the product. If there is magnesium glycine and they're just listing like 1200 milligrams, it's probably the combining magnesium and glycine together. So you don't actually know how much magnesium you're getting in the product. With these other companies like um, orthomolecular products, designs for health, uh, pure encapsulations, usually when they say the magnesium content, they're listing out the amount of magnesium. They're not actually showing you how much other things are in there like the glycine or malate or the citrate, but they're showing you the amount of magnesium, which is what you want. The RDA, which is the minimum, the recommended dietary allowance, just for frame of reference, because I also get this asked ask this question a lot, is 350 milligrams minimum per day for women, 420 milligrams per day for men. That's the minimum, and we're still deficient. We still actually don't even meet the daily requirements for the majority of people. So, but if you're an athlete, if you're under a lot of um, physical or mental stress, if you're on certain medication, maybe a diuretic, if you're drinking a lot of caffeine, there's a potential that you actually need more magnesium than that minimal. And some, there are actually some cases where people actually need upwards of 1,800 milligrams daily. And it just depends on how much, how deficient you are, how many symptoms you have. In another video, I'll try to do the magnesium deficiency symptoms because we know that the serum magnesium test is not a very good indicator of actual magnesium deficiency in the body because it's only 1% of the magnesium in your body. So 0.3 to 1% of the magnesium in your body is serum. The rest is located in your soft tissues. The majority is actually located in your bone. So taking a serum test is not giving you a true representation of how deficient you are. And that's why I think magnesium deficiency is missed in a lot of different doctor's offices because you test your magnesium, it looks good, it looks normal, but you don't feel normal, right? It's, if we all had great magnesium levels, we'd wake up feeling awesome every single day <laughs> when we uh, first woke up, you know, first thing in the morning, we feel awesome. We wouldn't have any sleep issues. We'd have no anxiety, right? But unfortunately, we're still magnesium deficient. So there's a lot of different things happening. And there's a lot of studies that actually show that you can actually be magnesium deficient while still having a normal test level on that serum test. So we'll talk about those later on. But I just wanted to really just answer today on focusing on one type of magnesium, one or two or one of three. I think this blend is amazing because it's giving you a big dose of malate, a little bit of glycinate, even though glycine is not a sedative, some people will say you might be a little bit more calmer throughout the day. Maybe you need more of an need need to be more on edge. I don't know if that's true or not. But taking a blend like this is great in the morning, and then taking a magnesium glycinate before bed is also good. You can also take magnesium three and eight before bed. But maybe you really like magnesium taurate. Maybe that helps you a lot better. Try that. Um, it's all, it's important to know that the organic minerals there's an inorganic and there's mineral there's inorganic inorganic magnesiums. The organic ones are the glycines, the, the malates, the threonates, the aspartates, the taurates, etc. They're better absorbed than, let's say, the inorganic, like the oxides, the sulfides, and the carbonates, okay? Citrate is also an organic, so that citrate actually is very good for constipation, but it's actually getting absorbed into your cells very well. And this little, this little bit of amount, you know, that 68 or 58 milligrams per two capsules, it's not going to make you run to the bathroom. It's just giving you a little bit of magnesium in different areas, right? So magnesium malate, magnesium glycinate, and citrate. Find a blend. If you like a blend and you want to take maybe three or four in one product, I think that's fine. I think if you get too many, though, it's just you're just watering down the amount of magnesium from what you want. But maybe you feel good. Maybe maybe taking it seven different times helps you. Play with different magnesium. See what works best for your body. See, see what you get the best effects from. I'm Dr. Robert Fredrickson. Hope you found this video helpful. If you did, leave me a comment. Uh, feel free to subscribe and also share with the friends so we can get more people knowing about different forms of magnesium, but also finding the right magnesium product for them. And of course, food sources of magnesium are always great. Don't think I'm just pushing the, the supplements. I think we should also eating, be eating a magnesium rich diet, which is, you know, pumpkin seeds, spinach, green leafy vegetables, almonds, walnuts, salmon, uh, chia seeds, etc. So these are avocados, bananas, forgot to mention those. So obviously be eating a lot of these magnesium rich foods in addition to taking a supplement, but magnesium is a foundational mineral. We need this every single day. And unfortunately, a lot of us are deficient. So if you're deficient in magnesium, a lot of other pathways are not going to work as well or as optimally. And I want everyone to have an optimal life, optimal health. I think magnesium is a great foundational starting point. Again, Dr. Robert Fredrickson, Thanks so much for tuning in and we will see you on the next video.